In this section, we're going to answer the question, what is radio? Have you ever looked closely at the radio merit badge itself? There are strange little markings around the top of the merit badge, above the lightning bolts. The first little group is a dash followed by three dots. In Morse code, that's the letter B. The second group is three dots. The letter S. Can you guess what the third is? A dot and a dash for the letter A. B S A. Morse code was the first kind of message sent by man using radio waves. What exactly is radio? A technical way of describing radio is that it's a system to communicate using electronic magnetic waves, but that's kind of a geek response. Many refer to radio as wireless, which it is. How many have used a cell phone? Is it a radio? It is wireless, that's for sure, but in order for it to communicate, it needs the rest of the system, including computers and telephone wires to connect to the cell phone towers. But there's definitely a part of it that is a radio, and most of it use it every day. Some will say ham radio is off the grid, meaning that with only a generator, a radio, and an antenna, we don't need cell towers, power, or telephone lines to communicate. Albert Einstein had a great quote. He said, the wireless telegraph is not difficult to understand. The ordinary telegraph is like a very long cat. You pull the tail in New York and it meows in Los Angeles. The wireless is the same, only without the cat. Today we get our entertainment, news, and other information over the internet. The internet usually makes it to our devices through radio using Wi-Fi. In addition to Wi-Fi, we get information via satellite, another radio method that is very strong. But radio isn't just entertainment and information. We use radio when we operate our mobile phones. We use radio when we open the garage door remotely. We also use radio when we heat something in the microwave oven. We even use radio when the easy pass in our car communicates with the gate to charge us the toll and let us through. Broadcast radio used to be a major entertainment source before the internet. Today there are still many good music radio stations, but there are a huge number of talk radio stations such as ESPN. Usually, a broadcast radio station has one or more studios like this one with large boards, the equipment with all the buttons and knobs, and of course the computers. Broadcast stations also use large antenna towers like this one to make sure their signal can reach as many of the intended audience as possible. When there is a hill or small mountain in a nearby populated area, you'll see one or more of these. Radio as a hobby is very popular. Probably the single biggest group of hobby radio people is with ham radio operators. There is no minimum age. Every one of you in this class could get an amateur radio license. Another type of hobby radio is radio controlled cars, boats, and airplanes. With a ham radio license, you're allowed just a little bit more power for your transmitter. These days, drones are becoming a very popular radio control device. Citizen band radio is used by many truckers. Many like to use family radio service, FRS radios, when they need to communicate wirelessly, such as during hunting. Broadcasting is one-way communication. Usually, you can spot a broadcasting antenna. It's very tall and such antennas are located near large population areas. Everyone can listen in on their radio to the programming. Broadcasting is usually operated as a business where advertisers pay to have their products and services advertised over the airways. Two-way communication is just that. It's not one-way broadcasting. 
There are always two or more involved. Businesses use two-way communication to be more efficient. Ham radio operators use two-way communication in emergencies, when experimenting with equipment and antennas, and mostly for fun. Call signs are a unique identification for a licensed radio station. Broadcast radio station call signs are three or four letters such as the FM station above and the television broadcasting station on the right. Cable television does not use call signs because their signal does not travel over the airways. U.S. amateur radio station call signs are letters and a number such as the one shown above. Every licensed ham radio operator is assigned a unique call sign. All U.S. ham radio operators have call signs beginning with AA, AL, K, N, or W. Each U.S. ham radio operator also has a single number in their call letters. This number can be 0 through 9, including 0 and 9. The number in our call shows the call sign district where our first license was granted. If you move to another district, you keep the same number. You can't be sure anymore that a person with a certain district number actually lives in that district. If each one of you passed the requirements for your ham radio license where you live now, what would be the number in your call sign? It's very common for ham radio operators to have a custom license plate made for their vehicle like this one. Okay, now for fun. Create your own imaginary call sign. Pick K, N, or W, and a number, and add your initials. There are 308 entities in the world with unique first letter or combinations of letters and numbers in radio call signs called prefixes. Many countries have multiple entities, such as the U.S. with Guam, Puerto Rico, etc. As a ham radio operator, I get a bit excited when I make contact with another ham from any one of these faraway places. If I'm operating in my radio station and came across the call letters 5 Romeo 8 Uniform India, I know that the other ham is licensed in Madagascar. If I contact somebody with the call letters Papa Whiskey 8 Sierra, I know that they are licensed in Brazil. Many letters sound similar over the radio. Weak radio signals and noise might make it difficult to hear voices. The letters B, C, D, E, G, P, T, V, or Z might sound the same. A guy who gives his name as Phil during a radio transmission is often mistaken for the name Bill. An operator for whom English is not a native language may pronounce letters differently, too. Radio operators use a standard phonetic alphabet to improve understanding and avoid communication errors. Now each of you speak the call you made a couple minutes ago using the phonetic alphabet words instead of just saying the letter. Okay. Now it's time to get out the workbook and answer the question on the first page, what is radio? You should have a good enough background to do that now.